So question here, the postpartum nurse is providing instruction to the mother of a newborn with hyperbilirubinemia who is being uh, breastfeed. The nurse should provide which instruction to the mother? Number one, feed the newborn less frequently. Number two, continue the breastfeed every two to four hours. And number three, switch the bottle feed the infant for two weeks. And number four, stop the breastfeeding switching to the bottle feed permanently. So best option or correct answer is number two, continue the breastfeed every two to four hours. What are the rationale? Hyperbilirubinemia is an elevated the serum bilirubin level. At any serum bilirubin level, the appearance of jaundice during the first day of life indicate a pathological process. Early and frequent feeding, um, the excretion of the bilirubin, the breastfeeding should be initiated within two hours after the but then every two to four hours are uh, thereafter. The infant should not to feed less frequently or switching to the bottle feeding for weekly or stopping the breastfeeding permanently is unnecessary. So what next? So next question here, we will see the select all Category question. The nurse is as, um, assigning a newborn who was born to a mother who is addicted to the drugs. Which finding should the nurse expected to note during assessment of this newborn? So mother is addicted the drugs, select all apply. So if mother is addicted, newborn will develop, will deliver or develop with some sudden symptoms like lethargy, sleepiness, irritabilities, good choice, and baby will be constant crying, difficult or to comfortness it is, right? And also uh, kettles uh, when being held. So it is no. So kite as a three, four, five, rational said, a newborn, a newborn of a woman who use drugs is irritable. The infant is overloaded easily by sensory stimulations the infant may cry in, um, and also be difficult to console, so continue, constantly crying. The infant would hyperextend it and also posture rather than the pedal when being held. Next question. The nurse note the hypotonia or irritabilities and also poor sucking reflex in a full term newborn on admission to the nursery. The nurse suspect the fetal alcohol syndrome and is aware that which additional sign would be consistent with this syndrome. Number one, length of 19 inches, abnormal plumber creases, but weight six pound, and also head circumference um, approximately of gestational age. So this baby, 
showing the alcohol, fetal alcohol syndrome. It is common and abnormal plumber phrases. So rational said the fetal alcohol syndrome are diagnostic categories of fetal alcohols a spectrum disorder is caused by maternal alcohol use during the pregnancy. Features of newborn diagnosed with the fetal alcohol syndrome include the craniofacial abnormalities, intrauterine growth retardation or restriction, cardiac anomalies, abnormal plumber crisis, and respiratory distresses. What next? Next question about the prioritizations or priorities. So here we see the nurse is creating a plan of care for a newborn diagnosed with fetal alcohol syndrome. The nurse should include which priorities intervention is plan of care. Number one, allow the newborn to establish one step rest pattern. Number two, maintain the newborn in a brightly lighting area of nursery. Number three, caressing frequent handling of the newborn by staff and parents. Number four, monitor the newborn responses to feeding and weight gain pattern. So this is the priorities. And rational said, the fetal alcohol syndrome, a diagnostic categories under the fetal alcohol spectrum disorder is caused by maternal alcohol use during pregnancy. A primary nursing goal for newborn diagnosed with Fetal alcohol syndrome is to establish the nutritional balance after the birth. And this newborns may exhibit hyper irritabilities, vomiting, diarrhea, or an uncoordinate uh, uh, sucking and also swallowing abilities. Um, quiet environment with the minimal stimuli and also handling would help to establish appropriate sleep rest cycle in the newborn as well. Next question here, they said out of four, which one should be the best option? The nurse administer electromycin ointment to the eye of a newborn. And mother asks the nurse why this is performed, which explanation is best for the nurse to provide about the neonatal eye profile axis. Number one, protect the newborn eye from possible infection required acquired by with the hospital. It is not a good choice. It is not true. Prevent the cataract. So erythromycin ointment does not prevent the cataract. Minimize the spread of microorganisms to the newborn from invasive procedure during the labor. It is not true. It does not. And prevent the infection causes of filmia neonatum from uh, occurring after the birth in a newborn to a woman with an untreated gonorrhea infection. So if the gonorrhea transmitted to the newborn, they can develop ophthalmia neonatum. So we should prescribe erythromycin ointment. So four is the option. And rational said erythromycin ointment or ophthalmic ointment 0.5% is used as a prophylactic treatment for ophthalmia neonatum, which is caused by bacterium Neisseria gonorrhea. Pre uh, 
preventive treatment of gonorrhea is required by law. Next question here. This question about the select all category. The nurse is preparing to care for a newborn, receiving phototherapy. Which intervention should be included in plane of care, select all? Avoid stimulation. Number to decrease the fluid intake. Exposure all of the newborn skin. And number four, monitor the skin temperature closely. It is important. And reposition the newborn every two hours. It is choice. And also cover the newborn eyes with eye shade or patches. It is. So this is we should include in the plan of care. Rational said phototherapy is the use of intense fluorescence light to reduce the serum bilirubin level in the newborn. Adverse effect from the treatment such as the eye damaged, dehydration, or sensory deprivation can occur. Intervention include exposing as much of newborn skin as possible. However, the genital area will cover. The newborn eye are also covered with the eye shade or patch and should that the eyelid are closed when shaded or patch are applied. The next question about the ASIP. So nurse create a plan of care for women with human immunodeficiency virus or HIV, and and also uh, baby. I mean women with human HIV infection and are newborn. The nurse should include which intervention in the plan of care. Monitor the newborn's vital sign routinely. Number to maintain the standard precursor at all times while caring of the newborn, definitely it is. In initiating referral evaluation for blindness, deafness, wearing the problems or behavior problem. Number four, Instruct the breastfeeding mother regarding the treatment of the nipple with a nested environment. It does not make any sense. So number two is the best option for ASIB uh, patient. Number two, so an infant born to a mother infected with ASIB must be cured for strict attention of standard uh, precaution, and this prevents the treatment for ASAB from the newborn. If infected, the others and prevent the transmission of other infectious agents to the possible immunocompromised newborn. Option one, three are not associated especially with the care of the potentially ASAP infected newborn. Next question about the prioritization. So the nurse is planning care for a newborn of a mother with a diabetic mellitus. What is the priority nursing considerations for this newborn. Number one, developmental delay because of excessive size. Number two, maintaining safety because of the low blood glucose level. 
is good choice and also talking bit because of impaired the sucking reflex and swallow reflexes elevated the body temperature and measure because of excessive fat and glycogen we said monitored safety because of low blood glucose rational said the newborn of a diabetic mother is at the risk for hypoglycemia so maintaining safety because of low blood glucose level would be a priority the newborn would also be at the risk for hyperbilirubinemia respiratory distress hypocalcemia and congenital anomalies also developmental delay or choking and elevated body temperature are not expected problems next question here the nurse prepare a administer a phylo phylo uh, phytonadion it is a chemical name of vitamin k so nurse prepare administer vitamin k injection to the newborn and mother asks the nurse why our infant need vitamin k injection what would be the best response should the nurse provide you newborn need medication to develop immunity vitamin k does not related to the immunity medicine will protect your newborn from jaundice it is not related to the jaundice number 3 newborn have a startling behavior bowel sterile bowel and medicine promote the growth of bacteria in the bowel number 4 newborn are deficient in vitamin k because they are gastrointestinal tract is sterile and this injection prevent the newborn from bleeding it's a good option so rational said vitamin k or phytonatidion is necessary for the body to synthesize coagulation factors it is administered to the newborn to prevent the bleeding disorder it also promote liver uh, formation of the clotting factors to and eight seven nine and ten newborn are vitamin k deficient because the bowel does not have bacteria necessary to synthesize the fat soluble vitamin k the normal flora in the intestinal tract produce vitamin k and newborn bowel does not support the normal production of vitamin k until bacteria adequate, adequately colonized it the bowel become colonized by bacteria as food is ingested vitamin k does not promote the development of immunity or prevent the infant from becoming the uh jaundiced and next question here they said further instruction so client who is positive for human immunodeficiency virus deliver a newborn infant then nurse provide instruction to the help the client with the care of her infant which client statement indicate need for further instruction so out of four which one is wrong you need to correct number 
I will be sure to wash my hand before and after bathroom use. Definitely it is, nothing wrong. I need to breastfeed, especially for first six weeks postpartum. It is wrong, definitely. It is the good choice. Support group are available to assist me with understanding my diagnosis of ASIP. Nothing wrong. Number four, my newborn infant should be an on antiviral medication for first six weeks after the delivery. It is absolutely right. So number two, right? So the mode of perinatal transmission of HIV to the fetus or neonate of HIV positive women can occur during the prenatal, intranatal, or postpartum period. HIV transmission can occur during the breastfeeding. In the United States and most developed countries, HIV positive client are encouraged to bottle feed their infant. And healthcare provider's prescription is always followed. Frequent hand washing is encouraged, encouraged. Support groups and community agencies can be identified to assist the parents with a newborn infant home care. The impact of the diagnosis of ASAP infection and available financial resources. It is recommended that infant of ACB positive client receive antiviral medications for part six weeks of their life. 